Line News Network. My name's Jet Likings. And I'm Vic Morano. Welcome to your home for automotive and supercar community news. Super busy episode this week, so let's take it to Redline. Past weekend, three big events, including Shift Sector, 2.4 hours of Le Mullets, and Exotics on Las Olas. Let's go. Before we pin it this week, I want to remind you that we had our first episode of Taking It to Redline, where we interview people from the automotive and supercar community. This past week, we had Craig Lieberman, the technical advisor to Fast and the Furious 1 and 2, and actually the previous owner of the orange Mark IV Supra and the silver Nissan Skyline GTR from Too Fast, Too Furious. If you missed it, check it out in our videos. Our first event from this past weekend was Shift Sector. This is a half mile event on an airstrip in California. It's two days with six different vehicle classes trying to reach their top speeds. Uh, some of the highlights of this were an all wheel drive Nissan GTR reaching speeds of 216 miles per hour, a uh, two wheel drive Corvette Z06 228 miles per hour. Um, in day two, we saw similar makes and models like uh, in 2015, Nissan GTR reached 233 miles per hour. Hour. Uh, for more about this event, head over to Shift Sector's website uh, or check out the monitor next to me for some of the highlights. Exotics on Las Olas. Huge event in Fort Lauderdale last weekend. From Veyrons to Chirons, Senna's, Enzo's, LaFerrari's, F40's, the Savage Boys brought out the Koenigsegg, Pagani's, Customs, Vintages, I mean everything you could possibly think of. Shout out to our field reporter Natalia from K2 Motor Cars and stellar fine detailing for the footage. The third event from this past weekend was the 2.4 hours of La Mullets. Sit back and relax as we're going to come back to this in a little bit. We're going to start off the Sheepy Race this week. Why? Because they were at Shift Sector. On November 18th, they released a video of breaking cars and records. They brought out Dylan and Ryan's green twin turbo Lamborghini Huracans and broke some records. Uh, first of all, Dylan's car, straight off the trailer, did 219 miles per hour in the half mile. Remember, this is stock motor and stock trans. Later on, he broke the record for one of the fastest twin turbo Huracans in the half mile. Great job, Sheepy. If you want to see more about this, check out the Sheepy Race YouTube episode or head over to Shift Sector. Over to Stradman, Saturday, November 14th, Clayton from Summit Auto Lab starts wrapping the Bugatti purple. We see about half of it done, the hood, the rear quarter panels, and the deck lid until Tuesday, where we finally get to see the finished product. He went with white accents with the side skirts, the front lip, and the Bugatti horseshoe around the grill. He kept the brushed aluminum gas cover and intakes, though. So earlier on in that video, Strad does mention that it's probably his last drive in the F430 Challenge car, as he does have a buyer lined up. And at the very end, we get a house update. As some of you guys may know, James bought some land and is designing his dream house. Unfortunately, contractors have told him the supply chain for building materials is a complete mess right now due to COVID. If they started right now, it wouldn't be done for 18 months. Over to Amelia Hartford, this is where we're going to revisit the LaMullets coverage. Before we get there, we see a first start in the Prius. Now, she starts this video off with a collaboration with TJ, doing some shenanigans for a NOS Energy commercial. They also talk about how Sandy got a new Mazda truck, and they talk about possibly doing another eBay turbo kit and then racing the Prius afterwards. I would love to see that. They do some minor stuff like wiring the injectors, put a new throttle body in, and then they crank over that case swap Prius and it starts. Pretty cool. We then get into our next episode, which is the 2.4 hours of the mullets. Now, if you don't know, this is a pay-per-view event where they invited a lot of YouTubers, professional racers, drifters, you name it, and had them race crown Vicks around a circle track for 2.4 hours. Now, Amelia starts off at Walmart getting supplies to dress up the cars. They get the car ready, have some issues like the nitrous bottle leaking, and then they start. Now, this is a tag team event with Alex Taylor starting starting first and she 
gets pretty much around the track a couple times before the car dies. It actually overheated, the tranny died. They swap out their car with a spare and then Amelia gets in. Um, she gets a flat tire a couple of laps later, but they do repair this and she actually finishes 17th. Uh, right after she finishes, it turns into a war zone. I mean, these cars are doing donuts, bumper cars, they're doing burnouts. It was pretty cool to see the end of it. Uh, but if you miss the love mullets, check out that footage and also head over to Amelia's channel for even more footage about this event. Street Speed 717, Friday, November 13th. Mike goes over his entire car collection of what's staying and what's going. The 63 split window, 2019 ZR1, and High Country are staying. As for the C6 ZR1, it's going to be a giveaway. So head on over to InShaneDesigns.com and buy some merch. Every $5 spent gets you one entry. Over to Monday's video, buckle in because we're going off-roading. Street Speed heads over to his buddy Bailey's farm where he puts his Raptor to the test. He drives in a creek with three feet of water, launches it in the water. He's climbing riverbanks, just going absolutely nuts. But things do get a little crazy. Mike decides to jump the raptor, and I mean jump the raptor. Check it out. After all that abuse, zero damage. I guess that's built for tough. Let's blast on over to DDE. Four videos from them this week, so let's get right into it. We start out with them buying a new to them LP560. They buy it for someone special, don't really tell us who, but then we find out in the next episode they bought it for Mia. Now, they bought it for Mia because she's been super responsible lately. She's moved out, lives on her own, has a job, and she now gets an LP560. But Damon's not gonna exactly give it to her. Now, uh, this car is gonna remain with, D with Damon at the DDE HQ and kind of be a project car for Mia and her dad. Basically a way to get her into DDE, but they actually do all this. It's not clickbait. It's pretty emotional. Check it out. We then get into the next episode and find out the new repair bill for that 560. However, first they go through a Starbucks drive through and Mia steps on it and they actually spill coffee all over the dashboard. Don't go, don't go. Oh, oh no. And it's, it's pretty funny. Uh, we then find out that her first repair bill is a whopping $3,700. Not bad for that Lamborghini tag. All it needed was stuff from an oil change all the way to tag lights. And at the end, Damon asks if we want to see Mia spend 24 hours straight in that car, similar to what Stradman did a few months ago. Now, the last episode from them this week was them lowering the Ferrari snowplow. Now, they got some decent snow accumulation up there in Canada, and they take the 488 out. They're doing donuts. They get a bunch of check engine lights, and they call the 488 a winner beater out of the fleet. Uh, and basically after that, they get Novatec lowering springs installed, and then they drive up a mountain with Mad Whips' Porsche looking for more snow. And guess what? They find it. They actually get the 488 stuck. They go to the highest residencies in Canada, basically the highest altitude you can live there in Canada. And if you missed it, wait till the very end after the credits of that video for a small Easter egg. Donut Media with four videos this week. Worst rated car products on the internet, GM's $1 billion disaster, why you're wrong about NOS, and is lifting your car worth it? Let's get into some track time with a great white North Corvette. He does some time attacks and he races his C8 Corvette against a McLaren 650S in the rain. If you guys want to see the outcome of this, go follow the great white North Corvette. Doug DeMiro with two car reviews this week, 2021 Genesis GV80 and the 2021 RS7. Two videos from Mondi this week. The first one is part two of the GTR Pro Crash. Uh, they revealed the damage of this thing and now it's pretty dirty. Uh, it's got a lot of scratches. However, the car was ceramic coated with a clear bra on the front. Now the car doesn't start at first when he tries to bring it over to the ceramic shop, uh, but it does eventually start. And then he worries about the thing overheating because the radiator is just clogged with debris. Uh, but basically the ceramic pro guys get all the scratches out. And then we get into a second video and they go and check out the brand new Ferrari Roma with Houston from Royalty Exotics. They actually do some full sends on the test drive and get pulled over. Go check out what the cop tells them. 
six videos from VinWiki this week, the top five valet sex stories, 16 cars with 20,000 horsepower, top 10 mischief stories, a found F40 in Japan, witnessing a Mustang street racing crash, and then following up with crashing a brand new Aston Martin while ice drifting. Two awesome videos from Hoobie's Garage this week. A $30,000 disaster that all SLS AMG owners face. And then his second video was why a project car is never finished. Speaking of finish, this Redline episode is nearing an end. If you missed it, again, go check out our interview with Craig Lieberman, the technical advisor from Fast and the Furious. Like, comment, subscribe, and come back every Friday morning for new episodes. Hey, until next time, keep it at Redline. Redline.